I love the combination of milk and honey. Mm, I really actually do love it. Interestingly, the land of Israel is called a land flowing in milk and honey. But why? I want to find out more. I want to see it in action. Mmm. That's good. All right, we're on the road in search of an answer to our question, which is, why is the land of Israel called the land flowing with milk and honey? We're gonna be heading out to a farm now. Maybe we'll get a few answers. Ladies, ladies, how are you? You looking great. Who does your hair? You're such a nice girl. Don't get upset. Don't get upset. Don't get upset. You can just feel it. Land of milk and honey. It's right here. I'm about to milk some cows. I'm, I'm feeling a little bit nervous about it, frankly. It's not something that I feel like totally comfortable doing it, but I'm gonna do it. Ben, okay. go ahead, I'm in your hands. So you, you press the green button. Press the green button. And switch it, bring it that way, and now you place one on each, each um, Okay. Each so that one goes on the back, on the back. Okay. okay. There you go. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. We got the other two. Yeah, the other two. Okay. Bring the bring the bar down. Bring the bar down. Grab these guys. Boom. That's it. Boom. And then 350 more times. 350 more times. There's, there's I want to ask you, what do you think it means when when the Bible says the Torah says the land of milk and honey? What does that mean? What does that phrase mean to you? Um, land full of goodness, I reckon. Land full of goodness. And do you feel it? A lot when of goodness. A lot of goodness, huh? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's great. Why is the land of Israel called land of milk and honey? Datech, what do you think? It's got the best milk and honey. That's what she says. There you go. Svi, uh, land of milk and honey. Do you feel it? Do you feel it when, 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 you're, when you're doing this work? Um, yeah, I know that uh, it is written that it's a land of milk and honey. And I think this is the most milk that we've seen in the history since the creation of the world, you know? So I'm very happy to be a part of it. From the Jewish farm, the milk goes direct to the bottling plant, where it is pasteurized and bottled hygienically. Wow! I'm gonna try this is goat's milk. Oh, goat's milk show. He says gotta mix it first, gotta shake it. Goat's milk, chocolate. That's good. That is really, really good. Your wife gave me some dates. I want to make a bracha on them, okay? That's it. Baruch atah Adonai, Eloheinu melech olam, borei pri ha'etz. Amen. Mmm. This makes me feel it. This is from Bet Shan Valley. All right, I just showed up at this date field in the Jordan Valley. And they are huge, majestic trees behind me, some of them up to 70 years old. Now, there's some disagreement whether the land of milk and honey is referring to bees honey or date honey. Okay, I'm here with David. He's one of the people that tend to this beautiful, huge, and majestic, that's the word I'm using here, majestic uh, date farm, these, this date grove. David, tell me a little bit about these dates. The earth here really supports... Uh you know very well the the growth of of this fruit tree it, it might be a strange thing i'm saying but these dates are somehow like 
Holocaust survivors to me. Like as though we're being reborn in our land. And here they come out of the, out of the ground, out of the earth, the Jewish children reborn in the land of Israel. There's something so fertile, so alive, so, so back. <laughs> We're here with Shlomi, and we're on a beautiful uh, community in the middle of uh, the, the Sumerian Desert, basically, uh, almost in the Jordan, Jordan Valley. Valley, right, Jordan Valley, and uh, it's called Roi, Roi, and it's, it's really a beautiful, magnificent place. Now, one of the things that you do is uh, you grow olives, olives, uh, grapes, and... Uh and, uh, and bees. Moves. Okay, so the queen bee lays eggs into this beautiful little marech, the yes. system here. Yes. Then they start to hatch. Yes. Okay, when they hatch, they want to eat. When they hatch, they want to eat. Then they get, they eat uh, around all flowers or pollen or the honey that's yeah. around them yeah. so so there's honey around them and then they start to eat it a little yeah. bit you can make a picture of me then it's open without anything on me אני אתן לכם ליתום, אתם תראו את ההבדל בין דבש רגיל שאתם מכירים לבין הדבש שפה אתם תאכלו. So we're going to taste a little bit of Shlomi's honey and he says he's going to blow your mind. Palestine milk and honey for the making of candy. These factories, a small part of the steadily expanding industry of Palestine, are only an index of the tremendous possibilities which are created by bringing together the Jewish people and the Jewish homeland. Well, we've seen some beautiful things. And as I stand here in the bosom of Eretz Yisrael, I'm thinking about what we saw, and I'm especially thinking about those honeybees. You know, those bees produce honey so that they could lay their larvae into those honeycombs. And then when the larvae hatch, they eat from that honey, they grow up to be big bees. That's nice. But you know what? That changes my frame of thinking about what honey is. Honey is not just a sweet snack. It's also like a womb. It's like something that grows those little larvae bees. And if honey is the womb, well, that makes perfect sense with milk because milk is mother's milk. Together, land of milk and honey could mean land of feminine fertility, land that grows us, land that makes us be big and strong, land that's our motherland, land that welcomes us in and embraces us. So, is Israel really a land flowing with milk and honey in terms of fertility and the growth of the Jewish people? Let's take a look. I am in the Shari Tzedek Hospital in Jerusalem and I'm holding my brand new baby son, Zal Tov. I have my baby and he's going to grow up here. But he's very, very cute. And he's very sweet. Uh, Dr. Gao, Israel is a leader in fertility medicine. Right. We uh, have uh, a lot of fertility activities here in Israel. I think we are uh, 
the most, uh, um, we have the, the higher number of IVF units per capita or per, per square kilometers, if you can say, comparable with other parts in the world. It's because, uh, first, we love children here. And uh, second, I think, because we are supported by the government to have uh, a lot of um, fertility treatments. And you also deliver many of those children. Right, right. I mean, this is a kind of, for us, those who are um, working here, for us it's like, you know, um, closing a circle. You start with a, with a gamete, with an egg and a, and a sperm, and uh, then you can continue to follow up the, the pregnancy, and uh, many times you also deliver them. It's really a, a good feeling of, uh, of uh, concluding a circle. This term, land of milk and honey, is also land of milk and honey is also there to to say that this is the land of fertility, land that gives birth to its children. Yes, yes. It's, it's logic. I mean, this is the the the, the meaning of uh, if everything is fruitful and the land is fruitful, and uh, then you also have results, more babies and more. Uh, more, uh, how do you say it in uh, agricultural? Uh, more <laughs> yields, more yes, fruits. More, right, right. The land of milk and honey is literally a land of milk and honey. We have a lot of milk production, a lot of honey production. But the real production is the return of the Jewish people to the land of Israel. The rebirth of the Jewish honey. people in the land of Israel. That's the real land of milk and honey. So the land of Israel isn't called a land of milk and honey. It is a land of milk and honey. It's just abundant. It's abundant in different kinds of fruits, culinary options, but especially in different kinds of Jews who have all come back home to the homeland. Here it is, a land flowing with milk and honey. I want to be in the land of milk and honey. The flowers are green and the trees are green.